to uh, what is the law in our what is the formula in, in the metaverse it's like uh, can you kill an avatar because they can keep start and start again people may have many lives in the metaverse so what is the law and who set the laws and how to make decisions on what should be punished and what should not so that makes me think about DAOs because we want to make a decision in a different type of way. Let's say if one day there are many people they can go to Mars and stay. And who is the ruler? Is it Elon Musk? Is it Joe Biden? No, obviously not. So Elon Musk is working on how to bring people to that new world, but he hasn't think about like what is the new rule of that new world. And so, uh, so is what we are doing now. However, we are further one more step than Elon Musk because we have already brought so many people to the metaverse. Uh, not we, like the metaverse has already got so many people there. And we start to think about, we need to start to think about what is the law, what is the formula. That's why we want to make decisions in a decentralized way. But is decentralized way the best way? of making decision because decentralized way what we have for now is only like voting so people are voting to make are voting to make decisions however we all know there's a saying that um, what's your position it influence what decisions you want to make let's say if you're super rich you want to make the decisions that are more beneficial for the rich group of people and if you're not, probably you want to make the decisions that are beneficial for your group of people. So, in my, from my perspective, voting is only one part of decision making. It cannot be like the whole reason of a decision making. But we cannot think, but why we are still choosing it now is because there's not a better way right now. And that is why we can only start from the easiest way that we can get into. That's why Constitution DAO, they're having a DAO. And that's why Root, they're having a DAO. That's why they're using Snapshot to do the voting thing. However, have any one of you ever used Snapshot to vote for any decision? Um, if you have, you, you may raise your hand to let me see it. I just, I'm not using that. Has other, other uh, speakers have done that? Yeah, I've done that. Oh, would you mind like sharing some experience of using it? Like what was it like? And what decisions did you have to make? Um, I, like the, the thing that I found with it, at least from like the project that I've been involved in is that basically like, so a lot of, a lot of people don't, uh, a lot of people don't get involved in it. So like if you have a project, right, and like there's tons of people that have voting power, usually it's just consolidated um, and the decisions, like it's, it's hard to get things passed and make decisions, right? Because you're relying on so many people to vote and so many people just aren't interested in it. Like maybe they're in the project just for the money or maybe they're busy with work. So I don't know, I just found that like, it, it, it works like the software itself works from that standpoint but i found that like from a community standpoint it's not the most efficient thing um for making uh progress on a project it's just usually a few people that are submitting uh things and if they have a big follower group then they're more likely to have more people voting to pass those things and i just find that a lot of people don't participate fully. usually just a few people's voices that are being heard anyway um so that was my experience anyway. Thank you, thank you for your sharing. Um, yes, I, I feel the same. Most most of the people that can come to the project for like for the money, and they don't want to, they don't care like what decisions should they make. And uh, Hiram Mark, would you like to share your experience? Hello, Hiram Mark. I'm seeing you are raising your hand. Okay, let me. You have to un you have to unmute yourself, Aranako. 
Let me DM him. Yes, sure. Uh, any any other people who would like to share experience with voting? Okay, let me continue. I uh, will wait for her and Michael at the same time. So I, I don't know if any one of you uh, are familiar with FICO. So FICO, they used to have a decision-making system, like a protocol. And uh, voting is just a small part of it. So if we want to say, who is the one that, if someone is reliable, that we can uh, give him a low one? Because what has, that's what we FICO doing. Uh, we shouldn't like consider, uh, we shouldn't rely on people voting. People may not, if there's 100 people, 80 of them may not care. And 20 of them, they just make the decision like with the, without thinking because they don't know who he is. Maybe only like 10 of them will have a look at his background. So uh, even for now, from my perspective, from my point of view, I think DAO can only be involved in a small part of decision making thing. However, what DAO can do is more than decision making. Although it's called decentralized autonomous organization, but I think what DAO can do is related with, it shows people that we are a community, we are gathering together with a same aim, with a same goal. Let's say why constitution DAO is like the people's coin is rising the price. We cannot consider constitution DAO as a fail. But the truth is, Constitution DAO failed for bidding for the U.S. Constitution. Most people may thought they didn't raise for enough money. However, that's, that's, that's wrong. They actually raised enough money. But the thing is, they decided to not bid for the Constitution because they realized that there's much more things they need to do. They need to pay, uh, I don't know, such as the tax or something else, and oh, or the gas fee. Anyway, they quit. So Constitution DAO is still be considered as a success because it shows people that when a group amount of people without a ruler, like without a centralized uh, power, but they just want to do something with the same goal and they can get it together and do something. So it shows people this and in the future, why we are having like many doubt works because we want to help people to bring, we want to help it to bring people with the same goal together. and. Is, will that help to be help project to get success? We cannot uh, just say yes, but what we can what we know is that when we bring more people together, it will be more influenced. That more people will know it. Right. Sorry. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, uh, Dana. So. Uh, Dana, oh, I was thinking because I know uh, right now you can see some of them already quite really savvy in the crypto world. So um, because we still have a lot of uh, new beginners and they're trying to figure out what is DAO and why DAO and how does a DAO work? And what are those available DAOs and what the, what are these successful stories and what is the challenge? For ex I, I want to have been more, for example, we can have, let's say, walk through helping some beginners walk through the kind of process because still now DAO is still in a living a very very small let's say group I always overall no more than uh one or two million people are really you know into this DAO world and it will still have a tons like people are still don't know so um will you be able to for example walk through with people in a simple language say what is DAO and why and how does a DAO work no. I saw, I saw Brad is, uh, is reading maybe something you yes. would like to say. I just wanted to add to the Constitution now, like another, uh, I guess, flaw, uh, is that like with, with that, so they raised $40 million to, to, to bid for that, right? And so the problem with like transparency sometimes is that it, it can be a weakness. So, so somebody bid just a million dollars more than them, right? But when you're bidding on something like that, you don't know how much the other person is willing to spend. But when the, when everybody knows that you guys have raised $40 million to bid on something, well, then they can raise 40, they can bid $41 million. And, and that's what happened was, you know, they got no bid by a little bit. And you're right, they didn't have enough money for all the fees and things like that. And there, there's a lot of money involved in storing that, that type of thing. But um, so I think that that was just something I wanted to add as well that I saw that was kind of a flaw was that, you know, 
competing organizations can see everything that you're doing and then they can plan accordingly, um, you know, so. Yes, that's true, the transparency. Actually, if you look at the juice box uh, tokenomics, you'll see that uh, it says everything is transparent and that hurts, uh, that hurts the constitution doubt because the the old money, the obvious team can see what, how much they're bidding for. And that's the point. Um, but another thing is that we are considered Constitution DAO uh, a successful project, although it failed for bidding. It's because it shows people like we can, a group of people, they can gather together and do something as uh, with the same goal. Thank you, Brad. Yeah, that's that's one of the most important thing why they fail. And uh, I will I will start from like uh, the whole our host question, like to give you a short uh, walkthrough. What is a DAO? So DAO is a decentralized autonomous organization. It stands for this. And it's just an easy mindset that people are making decisions together. So people are making decisions in a decentralized way. And there's no centralized power. There's no people can rule everything and make decisions for everyone. So that is the thing about DAO. It's just a mindset. And DAO came to our real world not only because of blockchain, it's even the earlier than like we're using crypto because DAO is just a mindset. Let's imagine like ancient Europe, ancient Egypt, uh, as I would have remembered. So people, they, they make speeches together. Uh, and if 10 people, they're make, giving speeches and people, the whole, uh, a whole group of people, like the whole village, they make decisions together. Like who will be our head of village for this, this week and the next person will be the next week. So this is a very typical DAO mindset. So it's, DAO is just easy because it's a mindset. And then people are starting to, uh, what I can see is people, they run from zero to one and then back to zero. So if we think that a DAO mindset is a zero and then why people go to the triangle way of rolling a thing because we found that that, that is more efficient like Apple, like big company, they have Google, so they need, or like uh, SpaceX, so they need someone as a, is uh, someone with, uh, as an inspired man, like Elon Musk, like Steve Jobs, so they can make very good decisions, and they know where is the way they are going to go. So we need someone who is very smart, with a very good heart, and they can make decisions, make really good decisions and the right decisions for us. And that makes a company, uh, a group of people can like be stronger, faster, and they can build, make things faster. However, the thing is, uh, if we consider a country as a group, and do we think like all the countries are equal, like they treat their people in a very good way, like everyone is equal? No, that's not true. Because when someone, that is just about humanity, like when someone is really powerful in a system and humanity will make human beings do bad things. So they will start to take advantage from the, so the privileged group of people will start to take advantage from like the normal people such as you and me. So that is why I want to go back to one, uh, go, go back to one to zero. So we want to, we think that in some group, in some decision, decision making, in, with some goals, we need to use the DAO way. So DAO is not like every project, every group of people should use this. So definitely a big company like Apple, like SpaceX, they shouldn't use the DAO to make decisions. They need someone who is super smart with a good heart. So DAO is only for uh, those with, I think should be with like people have very formal emotions such as they want to be for the constitution, something like this, or for some other project like uh, they, they are really community driven. I don't think uh, Apple is community driven because with, when Steve Jobs first built Apple, if he asked every people what he wanted, people will not be that creative on they want, they cannot, no one will draw an apple 
without Steve Jobs. So we may have some other stuff, but not Apple. So if, if Apple is community driven at the very beginning. So we would need someone with super creative. And that should not be a DAO. So there, if there was, so what projects or what things should use DAO? It depends on the goal. Like what's the goal of that community? of that group of people and it depends on if this thing is a community driven thing so do you need to really need to hear your community's voice let's start from a question is that do you think the truth is always told in a big amount of people or the small amount of people that's really a good question so i think that's also it depends. It depends on what kind of community that you're having. Yes. So, uh, from my point of view, I, I really always think that the truth is held in the 10% of people instead of the 90% of people. How about you, Brad? <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think it's like, it's just human nature, right? Like, you want, people are, are naturally, um, I, I, I don't want to say but like that they're protecting themselves over others and then like it just I find that sometimes people are maybe doing it not for the wrong reasons but they just naturally tend to to keep things to themselves and and you know that way they get the most out of it they're putting themselves first rather than others and I think it's a natural just it's a human uh, it's in our DNA so yeah I agree I think that that's that's common like among well, every industry and yeah I agree I can see some other uh, two people, uh, Joe and Amit. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Alder, uh, you raise your hand first. Could you just uh, share your view as well, please? Uh, yeah, I just had a quick question. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, loud and clear, please. Perfect. So uh, I'm an older guy. Uh, I've been in business for a long time. So I'm really just trying to make the connection with what's the use case for an example. So right now I'm hearing DAO as being kind of project-based. So I guess my question is, what's an example of this? Um, I don't know, would you use a DAO for a digital marketing company where you're working on individual projects? Or is this something that is really, uh, I guess, maybe geared toward uh, like the constitutional, right? So we've got one project, we want to buy something. So let's put this DAO together for it. So I guess that's, that's where I'm looking for some, what's kind of a, a couple examples of a use case for a DAO nowadays? Thanks. That's a really great question. That's actually, uh, I planned for our next uh, uh, couple of questions, uh, was asking uh, Diana to share some of, and actually she did mention, uh, let's say a constitution, and she mentioned uh, some other in the DAOs as well. So uh, Diana, do you want to, do you want to jump on that question first? Let's say what right now, uh, several kind of different categories of DAO and which are really successful uh, in terms of operation and all of this. I think if you look at the meaning points, they're at the, they're all down to the very beginning. Let's say, does any of you know SOS? It's called a safe open sea. So it starts with a very simple goal. So down they usually start with a very simple goal. Uh, that's why it can bring people's formal emotion. So SOS is because they want to save open sea because open sea wants to do something like uh, open sea. They are they're quite centralized, and so people want to save it in in a way of uh, getting rid of it and have a, a their own version of OpenSea point two. So that's why save OpenSea and they they, they they have a down called save OpenSea. And with that initial goal, they have a point. They release a point called SOS, and uh, the point spread is uh, is quite high right now. I think is. Uh, about a hundred times of writing. Yeah. Uh, so Doge, do you think Doge is a DAO? But the one thing is, um, most of the DAO, they have a peer community there inside. So how can you make a DAO be heard? It's like you need someone influential. Let's say Doge, they have Elon Musk, right? Although at the beginning they don't, but they have many TikTokers. They have many bloggers, YouTubers, they're making so they are small influencers. So Save Open Sea is just from a, I think, a community as well. So it's a, like a community leader, a key opinion leader, an influencer. So they start to have an idea that boom, we want to vote big for the constitution, or boom, we want to save Open Sea. So even for a DAO, like very 
very decentralized job. You need to have a key opinion leader. I, I'm seeing Joe like raising his hand. Maybe give this. Yes, Joe. <laughs> okay, sure. Uh, thank you for giving me the mic. Uh, I'd like to build on what Diana is saying. At the same time, I think that you'll find what I'm contributing, Mr. Otter, will also help to answer your question. Because when you hear what I have to say, you'll find that in time, there will not be a single business that cannot make use of a DAO the exact same way that there is not a single business that you cannot use social media. So here's what I mean. Now, recently we have seen a massive democratization of finance. And we have seen that in a most uh, glaring example, or the biggest, most high-profile example, I should say, is what happened with GameStop. All of these retail investors were able to get involved in the stock market and really have a huge influence. And that was the result of retail investors. If we look at, say, for example, Cardano, the massive growth that Cardano has uh, gone over in the last year or so, the overwhelming uh, majority of Cardano crypto are held by retail investors. It's retail investors that pushed it that high. And so when we look at a DAO, a DAO, I should say, is first and foremost a way for people to collaborate in a formal business way on the internet. Um, but it is also a, a natural extension of the democratization of finance. And I'll get to what I mean by that in just a second. But when we look at uh, you know, any sort of collaboration that might happen online, well, there's a major, major problem, and that's trust. You see, there are no valid or legally binding contracts that can really make sure that collaboration between people that you meet on the internet will really work out the way that you want. Uh, there's, there's nothing, you know, like you, you have to trust people that are on the other side of the world that you've never met. And it's a shame because the internet allows us to meet like-minded people in a much more efficient way than literally anything that's come before it. And so by organizing these groups for, for business projects of any sort through the DAO, you can ensure that every stakeholder or every contributor on that team is getting their fair share and that everything is governed in a fair, equitable manner. Uh, at the same time, the DAO is also a business <clears throat> which can, for lack of a better word, go public. It can essentially go public. And people will be able to invest in those retail businesses the exact same way that retail investors are able to invest in large businesses. So it's, it's the other side of the coin uh, when it comes to finance. But it also serves a very key role in, I guess, solving the whole problem of trust, which I guess comes down to smart contracts. But these smart contracts kind of come together in the form of a, a DAO, the same way that, like, you know, you need paper to tell a story, but you have to put those that you know, all those sheets of paper together in a book, right, for it to be a story. The exact same way uh, with, with the smart contracts and, and uh, DAOs. So that's my two cents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe, for sharing uh, your thoughts, and then that's great insight. Um, I wanted I want to add another another point when uh, Mr. O. Uh, C. Otter was asking. Uh, is that so far currently uh, most of DAOs are project based? Uh, in fact, I would say yes and no. I do see and what I do notice there are some of the really a uh, DAO that are more project based. And then, so, for example, right now it's a several. The funny thing is it's not funny. I say it's interesting uh, DAOs. So they say friends with the benefits DAO. That's totally basically for those are from it, it create a really uh, some good you know uh, crowd. And then there are some, the legal engineers, they create kind of Lex DAO. And there's some writers and early, basically uh, the writers, and they create their own mirror DAO. And, and some of the, and the artists, they create the kind of pleasure DAO. And some of the freelancer builders and the designers, they create the DAO. So those, I, what I would really agree when you're saying will be some of them, they're more project-based. But they, we do have seen some of you know really let's say Uniswap they have DAO and and Decentraland they have their own DAO, 
and 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 so many countries, so many uh you know big bigger entities that are starting basically while they're just launching their own major business at the same time they create their own DAO and like a protocol DAO as well. So uh, it totally depends. I would say some people if they really like an all in and they can absolutely you know make it a full uh, launch DAO and if someone just you know like a test run and see. If this can be a project based and with some friends or like minded people to do create a DAO, that works too. So, and, and that's actually some of this initiative for, for the blockchain business club as well, because at the end, and our mandate is to learn, to share, to explore, and to practice. And that's why somehow, and we are hoping that, you know, we constantly have this uh, kind of a not for profit, uh, let's say, education session and so then we can share more information knowledge so people join and say hey let's see if this can be really validate that what we have uh, learned in terms of in our understanding and 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 bandwidth with this kind of practice in a DAO world so um yeah go ahead brad yeah i just want to add to both your points and joe's as well as like i think uh also like this technology is really new right now and i think like with the global situation with COVID since so many people have been at home. Um, everybody has been online, a lot more people got invested, they're sharing with their friends, crypto and stocks, etc. And naturally on the internet, memes are the most powerful thing. So with Dogecoin and, uh, you know, these meme stocks, these things got popular and spread amongst people that were that have been on the internet and, um, you know, saw these things online. But I think eventually and also to, to add on to the trust point, I think trust is at an all time low across like globally with people. So I think the way DAOs are eventually going to go is that as more and more people get on board, yes, now it's, it's meme type things like let's buy the constitution, even though there is still uh, merit behind that and, and it's a significant thing. So there, there's like, there's a reason behind it, but I think eventually we're going to get to a point where DAOs are going to start getting there's going to be people that have been in these industries say hospitals for example where people aren't trusting the hospital system so maybe somebody who was a high level official who saw some sort of uh, uh bad actors in the space says hey i want to let's let's start a down by a hospital or you know these public utilities that we all pay taxes for and put money into and we trust that um, you know, that the politicians are, are using our money properly. Well, here's a system that, that is completely transparent. There's a public ledger. Everybody can see. Everybody has a say in it. So I think that, like, it's going to become such an important part of everybody's life to be used for these things that we trusted other people to run for us for so long. Um, so, yeah, I just I, that's, I, that's the way I see things going. That's exactly. Thank you. And Mr. Otter, I see you raise your hands. Um, just a quick comment. Thank you very much for the explanation from everyone. Um, it sounds like a possible use case would be maybe a, a club or a group buying real estate across the world. So instead of just, let's say, in my local city or town, I've got maybe 50 people, however many in the DAO, and maybe our, our purpose is buying real estate. And then maybe we use the DAO to help validate key people trustworthy through this process. And so that's kind of where my mind is going as I hear it description of what a DAO is. So just to comment a thank you and start to understand a little bit more. So uh, kudos to our speakers. Yes. So that's really, you know, see, when you're just here, what we were talking is already have your, your business ideas. Uh, that's, that's exactly when, when in fact, a lot of people can use their, what their current business, or they even can create a new business that they want to, because this will resonate the really the essential value that you know the blockchain or or DAO is is uh, presenting which is decentralized as a trust like right now actually the new word is not trustworthy is they're used trustless basically when you come to the world hey we're not talking about trust anymore we're just basically put move forward and make sure everybody is transparent everybody is on the same page so and when you say now come to the real estate in fact i if i if i heard um there are some actually a uh, business start to look at this real estate you know DAO, uh DAO world so if you have your idea i would say now um, now is better than any time to start with okay uh so thank you so uh diana i i do want to help you to, uh, can continue the conversation and and thank you you put a lot of uh, insight on and explaining and what is style 
and and then why now? That's probably another when when Brad was uh, and Mr. Otter were mentioning that you know the if Dow were in the end or solving the problem of transparency and and the trustworthy and and all basically uh, co sharing and co uh, participating all these features that you know people are really hoping for and they can they can actualize on Dow's world. So uh, from your uh, from your uh, experience. How usually, for example, DAO work? What are those essential elements for a successful DAO? So for a successful, so for a DAO to run well for a long time, I think the most important thing is the tokenomics, because the to tokenomics basically it set the rules. Like oh, what you do, uh, you'll be punished, and what you do, you'll be rewarded, and uh, it has different levels of rewards and uh, this, yeah. So by setting the rules, it makes people want to make contributions. So if you don't tell people clearly what they will get uh, by making contributions, people will, like, it's all about humanity. Everything, everything about DAO is about humanity. So because people are making contributions in a very decentralized way, you may, make, you may do something more than me. You may spend more hours than me. However, why, uh, maybe I'm very good at uh, voting myself, and I just, you know, I just make a proposal in the voting like, system and say, oh, what I did, why I did. However, you know me that uh, you, you spend more time on me, but why I just get more rewards than you? So the thing is to set a good tokenomics. That is a positive one that you can not only uh, make everyone make contributions, they feel uh, they feel good in their heart, like they are they are equally rewarded uh, by what they are doing, what they have done. And then it's, keep, it's a positive tokenomics that you can keep bringing the outside resources in. So the first and the most important thing about uh, a DAO to run long for uh, run well for a long time is the tokenomics. So, however, the thing is, this is the thing about uh, whether you have a chicken or you have an egg first. Let's say who can set, make a tokenomics very well? Like who can? It must be someone who's very smart. But how can and, and very logical and uh, with empathy and how can you have that kind of people in your uh, in your community so you need to have a larger community with more people coming in so how can you be uh, how can you have more people coming to your community it's because people know that uh, it can either because you have a, a influential influencer or because you have very good tokenomics that it can keep bring people in so it's a question that till now I haven't think of an, a, an answer it's like how to have a token, a good tokenomics. It's it. It's about like the smart people, but how to bring more people in so that you can have someone smarter. So uh, that's why I'm currently working on writing a uh, a web driven guide. It's actually uh, I brought some example, some examples of tokenomics that people can choose from. Let's say uh, why I think juice box is. It's a smart tool. It's because JuiceBox it says it's one. It's a so it's a funding tool for DAO projects. So it's a funding tool. So it's tokenomics. If you ever read the tokenomics of uh, JuiceBox, you'll see oh, it has from level zero to level five. It's super easy that you can understand. And you know, people, human beings, they are just they want to follow the rules. If you want them to set the rules for themselves, and a huge amount of human human beings, if they are the 90%, they just don't know what to, what to do, how to start with. But people like to play games with existing rules. So, the most important is like, the, the small group of people who set the rules, and equal, the equal rules, the positive rules, and the rules is called tokenomics. However, we are, we are having a DAO. The DAO is like, we don't have small people. So this is kind of, uh, I, I still haven't found the answer, but I think what we can solve the problem, what we can do is to, uh, like, we can write uh, as as much as the tokenomics example as what we can do. For example, so the tokenomics must be very, uh, must be very close with your with your goal. So let's say if we want to know, uh, OpenSea. Let's take OpenSea as an example. And we know that many artists, there are many artists, they are leaving OpenSea because OpenSea they doesn't have something like uh, KYC, it doesn't have loyal customer staff and uh, 
uh, there are many copy and paste of other people's uh, NFT. I know I have a friend, he actually has bought some fake loot NFTs uh, with a real loot price. So it's, it's it might be a little bit cheaper than other loot. And he tries to find a cheaper loot. And then it's just a little bit like he's, he still spent like two to three Ethereum to buy the loot. It was like, uh, uh, it was two to three months ago. And that's fake. So people, they happen to buy fake NFTs on OpenSea. And there's no way they can get their money back because OpenSea doesn't do the KYC. And then it tends to uh, many artists, they lack OpenSea. So what we can do to write our tokenomics on this topic. So we can write so a tokenomics such as you find an artist who has black OpenSea and ask them on Twitter and then ask them why they leave. And if you get a reason or a response, then you will be rewarded with some token. So this is a task we can have for our community with the goal that we want them to know the this class of OpenSea. So our tokenomics must be very close with your goals. So you, you always remember your goal, what your goal is when you're running your tokenomics. And the second part about how to have a DAO to run run well for a long time, I think is the people. Like you must have people that they are very willing to think, willing to do research, they're willing to do, like they're humble, they're willing to listen to others. But people must be like with a good heart so that they can uh, run this down well. And we probably are willing to do many research there, they're willing to think. So people are smart and they are willing to think. And that's, you can start, you can make your DAO start well. So probably in the future, after you have long, run it for a long while, you got a big group of people, and that is fine. But at the very beginning, it must be a small group of people. They have very clear goals, and they are with a good heart, and they are not like eager of uh, what benefits they want. So at the beginning, it's about contribution. So DAO is always about contribu making contributions at the very beginning. So that's the two things I think. One is tokenomics, one is the, the right people. They are the two things that I think can make your DAO run well for a time. And then it comes to uh, like how how we are having the DAO. So it comes to the DAO tools. Let's say uh, when people are having a DAO, what tools they use? So they need to have a Twitter and they need to have Discord so that they can manage the community. And with Discord, they will usually have a forum, the forum that where people can make their proposals. And then they need to ha use snapshots that people make the voting. And then, well, they must have a website for people to, because each project, they must have a website. And the website uh, can be linked with MetaMask. And people can use, or they may have their own tokens, and people can uh, use the tokens to support uh, the project. So there are a couple of uh, there are a couple of tools that need to be used, and they are not, and they are separated. Let's say DAO users, they require advanced blockchain knowledge, and uh, because at least they need to know how to do the key pair management, they need to use crypto wallet, and they need to sign and pledge the wallets, uh, and they need to use VPN in some area, and they need to be able to use Discord. I don't know how many people are using Discord uh, here today. If you use, you may use your hand. And we all know that Discord is not that user friendly. So Discord is more coder friendly, uh, from my point of view. And people, they may need to be able to read English. Uh, and then they need to operate extremely complex web pages. And they need to afford the high transaction gas fee. So how many people are left after this long process? So that is why I think the DAO is still at the very early stage that we cannot bring the right people in. Because there must be many people, let's say if we have a translator style, we all know that translation is uh, very necessary uh, right now in the crypto world. However, if someone is very advanced in translation, and then he must pass this crypto test. I'm not saying that there is really is a crypto test, but it's like all the things that I've mentioned about how it's like a test. So this influenced we bring the right people in, like 
there must be people that are very good at economy and they can write very good token tokenomics, but they just cannot use the tools. And we just set the threshold to didn't let them in to this to, to your to your project to make contributions. And then so in my opinion, to run your DAO well, you must do have the a good tokenomics, a positive one, and have the right people, and then is choose the right tools. Like the right tools, the easy ones that you can, without threshold, that you can have more chances to bring the right people in for your tokenomics. I'm seeing I am I I am believe that Ethereum already in your hand. Yes. Would you like to share? Yeah. No. Thanks. Thanks uh, very much. Uh, can you just explain to me how I could start my own DAO? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm pretty new to this, so like. Are there like certain steps I could take? Are there like platforms or uh, services that could help launch my own uh, DAO, or it, does it have to be like very complicated to technical? So normally, before uh, you are having two choices. So the best choice is that you can have your Discord, you can have your, uh, you can have your forum, and uh, you can have your own website. So that is. Uh, and so that is a way that what people are doing now. So with many tools combined together. Uh, so the second way is, uh, I think our host would like to uh, introduce you the app called YouTube.1. Would you like to do that? <laughs> of course, you are the CMO of YouTube.1. Then you're the best in uh, reference and then endorsement. So yes, actually, uh, in answering uh, your question, MP, um, it is right now, there are so many different buzz and, and then, you know, uh, let's say crowds around us and everybody to get excited. And some people they have, you know, actually, yeah, some people they say the, the, the biggest, uh, DAO, I think this is 2.5 billion, uh, the DAO that so far is the, uh, fundraised, uh, the beat DAO. So DAO is sophisticated process as Diana just uh, relate and there are a lot of uh, uh, the rules and the people and the knowledge and the process. However, we do have uh, one business now, actually the unicorn business now, they're introducing a very, very easy in the runner of um, without, uh, I would cannot say without any, at least very little uh, knowledge about the blockchain and they still can create a DAO basis. So like, you know, you create uh, your own group like, you know, in any, uh, WhatsApp or other, other, uh, you know, social media platform with YouTube, that's YouTube actually is doing, trying to simplify all those sophisticated and high theory of knowledge and make it really simple to go. So they put all those very, uh, you know, the smart contract you know, embedded behind and in, in the user's interface, you just basically several buttons to click, but in behind that's all. This, you know, the smart contract, that's the most actually the critical and the essential element for a DAO, which is you need to have, you know, basically coding and, and with all the same rules you need to set up and then you start to look at, you know, the funding. Now on YouTube, actually the funding piece, they, they're making a leverage, uh, you can issue a token. So having your token issued, but of course the token here is a utility token. It's not, let's say, listed coin, but it allows you to practice that all those principles and, and then uh, the ways that you can, uh, you can leverage in, in the principle of token economies and, and then the power of uh, blockchain. So uh, simple answers, yes, uh, we do know uh, YouTube.1. If you have interest, you can do a bit of, you know, the search on that YouTube.one. And, and you can learn about, and we do have, you know, several, um, people. And if you later on want to learn that, how to really practice that, you can uh, DM, uh, us, uh, me, Diana, or, or anyone, you know, on the, on the stage, you can uh, learn more about that. But also, uh, again, for us, let's say, uh, our blockchain in uh, business, you know, the club is to present and share as much knowledge information as we can. So we want our, let's say all the decision makers or business owners, you can have more information and based on your own bandwidth of understanding the sophisticate, the world of blockchain and they say, yeah, all the fancy things. And how can I, I'm, I'm just very, very traditional business owners. 
how can I use this blockchain? How can I basically leverage that all those, this, this, you know, decentralized and all those transparent, you know, powerful tool to benefit my current business? So that is even, oh, I see uh, Leo raise your hand. Leo, please. Yeah, so um, I don't know that much about the crypto world or the DAO or anything, but I do know, like Diana said, that it's it's going to be the future. Um, but I had a question about, like, what's to stop somebody from creating a DAO for nefarious purposes? So, Diana, do you want to answer that question?
for the equality and for the good things of the metaverse. So what I think is um, all about humanity, and we need to set a good rules for the humanity. Yes. How do you think? Well, I, I have a question. Um, do you think that the decentralized environment that we have right now is actually practical compared to what governments around the world would adopt? For, for example, uh, I'll give you an example. We know that the, the U.S. is big on having leverage on different um, different countries, given that like our whole system is built on reserve currencies, um, and the U.S. dollar is the reserve currency. In the crypto space, there is two forms. There is a private blockchain, which for the most part contracts on that private blockchain, and then you have a public ledger, which is the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin, for example. So do you think that it's practical that building an application of what 3.0 would, uh, governments would adopt the whole decentralized movement, or do you think they would move towards a private ledger which they can control for? I saw Brad raising hand right after this question. Do you have anything to say? Yeah. Uh, so, it's a good question, and uh, it's an important one because of the times that we're in right now and what's happening with currencies all over the world. And I think, like, if you look at uh, El Salvador, which was the first country to adopt Bitcoin after the gold standard, you can see that it's a much smaller country, and uh, they were in a lot of trouble because uh, some of these. So, some of these countries that, that um, are highly centralized or the power is highly centralized, they are the ones that tend to abuse their control. And with the ability, with the, so the thing with the United States on it's not backed by anything. And that's why the Federal Reserve is in trouble right now, because there's nothing to back your dollars. So as they print more of them and the supply increases, obviously the value is going to go down. So I think that uh, this is the most critical time. This is what Bitcoin was designed for was to create a transparent, um, finite resource that can be provably uh, finite. So with gold in the past, right, that's, that's what people uh, led to when we had these issues of inflation, which we had over and over and over again. And uh, they, they removed that so that they so that they were able to, to, to kind of get themselves out of trouble. But what happens is it, it ends up working the opposite way, and they have, they're stuck in a position where they have to continue to print. And right now, uh, savings, people, uh, the average home, uh, average home savings are depleted. Um, the government and, and the job, uh, the unemployment rates are increasing. There's a lot of things going on in the world where the government's in a situation where if they had let things work naturally, yes, times would have been tough, but the, the system would have worked, but people continue to, to find outstanding and it just ends up getting worse. So I think that what's going to happen is a lot of the smaller countries are going to start adopting this going forward. And the people in these countries that have had gold for you know, their entire lives just because their dollar needs to place away. Now, now that anybody in the world can use this and have access to a Bitcoin wallet, they're starting to say, oh wow, if I would have just put my $50 into Bitcoin, over time, it, it has gone up, and I know that they can't be manipulated, and they can't print more of them. So I think what it comes down to is um, just what the what happens with these smaller countries. In this example, where I mentioned El Salvador, I think there's another country that came out and said that they're going to add it. So I think it's just a matter of time because our, the system we have. Every, every, there's no dollar that's been around for more than 100 years, right? Like, eventually another country or place uh, takes the position of the global reserve currency. So, um, and it's all related to the petrodollar as well. So, I think that the system is just, it's been squeezed so hard that there's, that people are naturally going to go to the technology that they see as transparent and can't be manipulated by a certain power. But then, obviously, you have the governments that uh, want to remain in control. So, I think what it really comes down to is 
is there going to be a ban on these things or is the technology already so far and so widely adopted that that can't happen so there's no there's no answer for that i don't think i think it's just a matter of time and whether you have conviction in the technology and you understand it because you're seeing a lot of people that are spending tons of time you know like the first thing i read was the the bitcoin white paper and, and it's crazy because like it, he predicted all of this and it's it's just like I think that people are going to educate themselves enough and just realize that the system that we've had, although it's it's worked somewhat, it's it, it, it's just been taken advantage of and it's been squeezed so hard that we have to find something that puts the power back into the people because we're at the end of the day the government works for us, right? But what we're seeing, and I, I don't want to make this political, but what we're seeing is that we're losing the, those rights and those freedoms and, and the access to the things we pay for and they're starting to degrade and it's all because of the fact that that, that currency that's being used is, is just being manipulated and abused and it's because of the fact that, that they don't there's nothing that's backing it. So at the end of the day, currency is just the belief system, right? It, it, that, that piece of paper you have, it, before it was backed by gold, so your $100 was good. It was backed by the government. The Federal Reserve backed that. Now that that's not there, so they're relying on everybody accepting that this is the dollar that's being used. But if if things start to degrade more, and we continue to go down this path that we're going down, it's it, it's a, it's a, it's like I said, it's it's a belief system. So people are learning about the the crypto and Bitcoin and things like that, and starting to believe in it and seeing that it works and seeing that it grows. So. I think there could be a transition eventually, um, whether it be Bitcoin or another one being used, or it being used to back the currency. You can see right now that uh, China and the U.S. as well are, 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 are and same with Europe, they're all moving to a, a digital dollar. But the thing is, that's not going to change anything if it continues to not be being backed by anything, right? That can be proven. So. Um, I think it's just a matter of time, and I think in, in our lifetime we're going to find out. That's really a great, uh, let's say, combination of questions. When Leo mentioned that this is the you know regulation or is it people's behavior of intention, good or bad, and when Conscience mentioned that you know the government's resistance of acceptance of this you know centralized or decentralized. And when Brad was was mentioning, you know, now what, what basically is just a matter of time, independent some variable factors that you know the, the the path, the way get into that you know really generalization of our daily life. So my last question, actually, Diana, that's actually uh, three three people's you know uh, the points come to that come uh, in the end to the la our last questions that. What the current challenge and what's the potential that you can see from the DAO's development? Oh, thank you. Thank you for everyone sharing. Thank you for your question. Uh, our host. So what, what I'm seeing, like the biggest challenge, one is about the tools, how we can have like a easier tools to bring more people in, uh, like with no threshold, because you see now we're using Scott. This guy is very centralized. Uh, I mean the data when the data is stored, and then I'm using snapshots. So we are using we are combining many tools together, and that is a, a huge threshold. So what I think is about the infrastructure of DAO. So that is one of the big challenge, and it's also what um, uh, what uh, what we are doing, we are managing on. And the second is a uh, uh, good tokenomics. I haven't seen many good uh, tokenomics uh, on the uh, DAOs right now. I can see some. But I think uh, there's still a huge um, space for we to be more for us to be more creative. So I want to see more creative people in the world, uh, in the metaverse, in the DAO development, uh, working on tokenomics. And I want to see like uh, a tool with no threshold that even like even a college student wants to invest for one. And one dollar on the project that he supports, and he can do it with without the threshold. Thank you. And I might leave it to Leo. Yes, Leo, please. Yeah. So I was wondering, like, what types of things getting into um, this world, uh, the metaverse, and tokenomics, creating systems that would benefit everybody. Like what things can we learn? Would it be like coding or 
like um, engineering or I just don't know what things I need to start learning so I can contribute in a positive way. I think we can. I think we can start uh, from reading, like read uh, the good examples. So uh, there, there are tons of like good projects talking about this. You can, you can read like if you search on juicebox.ethereum, okay, so it's a website, and then you can go to go search uh, the projects it has and go read its tokenomics. It's why I start always talk about juicebox because its tokenomics is really easy. It's just one page from level zero to level five. And then you can start to understand, oh, what is a tokenomics? And you'll find that it's not that hard, but you can start your own one. You know, a, ju a, a tokenomics uh, service, it may charge a lot. However, if you read some good examples, from start from the simple ones, you'll think, oh, it's not that hard. As long as you're creative and you're willing to think. So start from reading, always start from reading, I think. And uh, learn the skills you need when you need it. When you feel like you need it, then you start to learn it. Instead of you have a, a very a system of what you start as lesson one and what you start as lesson two. Uh, what I think is like this. And always read the news. The news, yes. Like you can look at what the bench, uh, big venture capitals they are, they're investing. And look at the, those projects, those popular projects. Thank you. That's a great, uh, you know, advice that for every one of us that can uh, can learn from. So let me just give in the past one to uh, Conscious for last question. So Conscious, please. Um. Uh, as far as uh, Leo's question, I I would say the the best way to start to understand um, the basics of the whole ecosystem is to under understand the economics first. Um, because I, I think in understanding economics, you understand how uh, different governments um, create laws and uh, bring forth um, certain certain structures in order to determine which currency would take over. Like, for example, how the Dutch lost their reserve currency and it moved to the British and then from the British um, during World War II, it moved towards the um, it moved towards the U.S. And then potentially, who could take up after the U.S. would be this uh, new digital framework, which puts it in the limelight of uh, of China possibly taking over because they're how the advancements that China has made in this space. Coding as well uh, does a great deal of understanding the technology behind it, um, understanding how data structures work would help you understand how uh, the whole mining process works and how to build on top of uh, pulling those transactions. Uh, for uh, my, my question, it was going to be towards um, um, Brett, uh, Brett, um, you, you were talking about how, uh, the, how, um, different, smaller, smaller, uh, countries, smaller countries were adopting, uh, cryptocurrency as a way of, of payment in, in, in the system. Do you think that um, majority of the buying that we're seeing in cryptocurrency is due to the inflationary environment and what we're seeing in the U.S. right now? And uh, if so, what do you think the outgrowth would be from the Fed increasing interest rate? Do you think that that would the liquidity that's in this space right now because there's like 12,000 different coins in the crypto space right now. Do you think in the increase in interest rates would reduce that number and we're, we're going through the same thing that we've gone through in the 90s with the dot, the dot com movement? Yeah, I like personally, I think that uh, what would happen if they increased interest rates is that yeah, initially it would it would destroy everything. It would destroy the housing industry. 
it would destroy it would destroy many industries and i think it would above all just push crypto even farther ahead so at the beginning yes i think it would be abandoned but i think that the technology has been widely enough distributed that there's certain coins the larger cap coins i think that those would would absorb a lot of liquidity because at the end of the day you have to put your dollar somewhere right like people don't want to just sit on a dollar they want it invested into something and so if all these other institutions crumble which i think what would happen i mean we're already seeing the banks having major issues and stuff so i think that yeah if they at, at the beginning that would happen but i think that eventually it still leads to to crypto uh becoming a currency i mean bitcoin right now is going to be releasing smart contracts like i think that right now people aren't interested as interested in bitcoin um however it is the macro and it controls the whole market so when it goes down it typically brings everything else down with it but as as these larger development teams continue like you see jack from twitter left is is working on um on bitcoin development i think that bitcoin is something that will be around forever and i think that it's going to get to the point once there's smart contracts and the transaction fees become uh a lot lower and the, the transaction times speed up like they're already using it in El Salvador you can go to McDonald's and buy a $2 cheeseburger with bitcoin instantly so um i think these new technologies are really exciting and these a lot of the coins are popping up there's money flowing into the space those things will 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 eventually probably go to zero and the larger cap coins with the biggest development teams will be the ones that uh succeed but the cool thing is that there's things built on top of these so like with ethereum and bitcoin like all these companies are being built on top of it where now like you can own ethereum and you're essentially owning part of the network so you have, it's not like the internet where instagram and facebook came out and you know uh they own all the data and they have complete control over everything because you can't own a piece of the internet you can't you can't uh you can't it, it, it's not providing anybody with any sort of investment where now it's like all these apps and things are being built on ethereum it's not going to be web 2 anymore it's going to be web 3 for everything so uh that the, the internet's you know the most powerful thing we have and now now it's going to be on the blockchain so i don't think it's going anywhere even if interest rates do go up so you're <laughs> saying that with so you're saying with the web 3 movement this is the end to government entities in a sense I think it's it's I think that a lot of things are going to change for the better. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better, but I mean it's all speculation, right? Like I I don't have a magic wall. I just I just think that uh, th- there's an evolution of money and there always has has been. They use seashells before, right? Like so it's like it's just a natural evolution and it's a bumpy ride, but it's it's awesome that everybody's here and getting educated and we're all collaborating. I mean I I love this stuff. Like it's great to to be a part of it and see so many new people getting in the space and i find that everybody i've met on the spaces and it's like you just got to like you're doing like put your hand up and get involved and learn cuz we're all here to learn and teach each other it's just awesome and like i don't think we've had anything like this before where so it's like how could this not be mass mass adopted i think there's way more good that can come from this than there is bad thank you thank you that's a fantastic discussion today first a great appreciation to our speaker diana today and for your uh, invaluable time in sharing your insights and story and uh, uh, knowledge and, and then shout out to all you know brad and bill and all the speakers are, are really active participating of sharing your thoughts and uh, thank you the thank you very much and really in the end i want to say this is the you know uh, a A, a club for our blockchain enthusiasts to say a uh, blockchain in business club so this is the space exactly when brad was saying to learn to share and to explore and to practice because this is a two new world and then we don't want everyone to basically come with the same mistake that's why we come together and share the thoughts and make sure you if some mistake that we made okay we make sure other people will not that's how we take care of each other look after each other that's how this this spirit of doubt Again, uh thank you very much everyone and we're going to have our weekly uh Thursday 7 p.m. um EST uh time. So if you have any specific uh interest topic, please just uh, DM me and then I can arrange you know uh the different speakers come here and share their professional thoughts and and please uh, you know uh, always come to uh help out help out each other. So again, uh so that's the uh session for today and thank you again. uh for our speaker uh Diana and uh, Brad and uh, Leo and all of others we'll see you next week thank you very much
Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.